I am T Max Tony. I am a vintage Nitro RC historian. Okay, guys, I got a surprise for you today. No, it's not my terrific T Max 3.3, although it is pretty terrific. This is probably the fastest, coolest, most unique touring pan car I have ever seen. This is a Serpent. It is from the early 2000s. This runs a .21 non pull start engine. It has really interesting race features. I mean, unless you're into eight scale racing, this is some of the stuff you will not know. It has quick disconnect wheels. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. There's no nuts here at all. This has a really unique body mounting system. So if I press down on this roll cage right now, you could see that the suspension is a little bit active inside the car. This has what is known as floating body mount. So if I touch down on the actual body post right here, the suspension does not move at all. This really helps a lot in the aerodynamics of this car. So without this wedge shaped design, this car just would not handle that well. It has also what is known as a Sentax clutch. Pretty much one of the best clutches you could possibly get. It's something that I have to read up and study myself. Let's take a look under the body. I'm gonna remove the body for you guys. I'll demonstrate the way it sits on the car. So when you remove it, it has loads and loads of carbon fiber, which is exactly what you want. This stuff is rigid, it doesn't flex. The chassis itself has so many cutouts. Basically the rule of thumb in a high-end RC is the more cutouts you have and the thicker your chassis, this thing is a five millimeter thick plate chassis, the more expensive this is. This was about $800 when it was new and it was sold as a kit only. So let's talk about the body mounting system. So if I press down on this, you could tell the suspension is actually moving. But notice in the back here, the body mount system. If I press down on it, nothing moves. So this is what they call a floating body mount. No matter what the suspension of the car actually does, the body mount will not flex, therefore the body itself will not go up and down the suspension. Basically, that's what you want because you're gonna maintain the perfect level of aerodynamics even in turning, cornering, and high-speed runs. So these quick disconnect wheels, this is pretty much industry standard for a car of this level. You don't have any wheel nuts at all, it has a clip, you basically just press it in a little bit like this and the wheel comes off. You see how easy that is? It has a giant axle, the wheel pin is in the middle here. The main idea of this system when you're racing is to decrease the time it takes you to change tires. These foams wear out relatively fast when you're doing a lot of high speed runs and turns and the way to put this back, you see inside there's just a kind of little uh, groove in there. To put the wheel back on, all you do is just simply slide it on and it should clip back on. There we go positive connection, absolutely no wobble of any kind. I mean, look at these wheels. These are freaking enormous. The diff system in this car is really, really interesting. The rear acts as if it's a solid diff, although I am not quite sure if it is. So if I spin like this, you know, basically the car wants to go back and forth. But the front, I think this is what they call a front one-way ball diff. So I could easily spin one tire. There's nothing uh, going to the back at all. No power losses of any kind. So basically this is what you want and is ideal setup for, you know, basically uh, killing people out of a turn. The front suspension has a really interesting, unique type sway bar system. Not at all like anything I've really ever seen. You see this brown piece right here? So as I push down, it tends to flex a little bit. So this is fully adjustable to increase some of the sway bar tension. If I lift the car off the ground like this, you could see if I move one of the wheels up and down, it tends to also flex. The rear sway bar system is also relatively unique, not at all like I've ever seen in cars. Normally it goes through the back, there's some kind of terrible looking design. Here, it's routed straight through the top. As I push down on the car itself, you could tell that it's literally moving up and down. The body itself, not only it being a wedge shape, but it also has a lot of adjustability in this wing right here. So if you raise and lower the wing, you will increase or decrease your downforce. Now, as you guys know, the new Arma Infraction pretty much has a similar type of wing design, but the Serpent had this about 20 years before the Arma. That's another reason why I constantly hate on Armas. In terms of the drivetrain, this has three belts and pulleys all around. This is pretty typical for a road car. You know, the original HPI Nitro RS4s also had a similar layout. They had pulleys and belts throughout the car. Now notice the way the shocks are set up. 
These are what they call terrific. The more of an angle and the more of a diagonal you have, this tends to create a better shock absorption rate when you're turning. You know, I've always thought that these RCs were just extremely low to run, but honestly, the ground clearance is not terrible. This seems a lot taller than my HPI Nitro RS4. Now, of course, this is an eighth scale chassis, but man, I gotta say, it is kind of tall off the ground right there. I think that's about, what would I call it? Uh, more than half a centimeter. Another really interesting design for racing, you know, in order to maintain a low center of gravity, notice this fuel tank. The upper portion of the fuel tank sticks out from the upper deck, but look at where my finger is. The fuel tank is basically almost as wide as the entire chassis. So th this thing has a lot of extra fuel, but it's really, really low to the ground on this. This car has a vented disc brake. Now, unlike a lot of the standard composite type brakes, this thing, as you could tell, I'm gonna turn it right over here there's a disc right in the middle right there. That is meant to dissipate a lot of the heat while braking. During the run, this thing did not shift into second gear, so right now I'm gonna take off this gear. Hopefully there's something I could adjust in order for it to shift. This is the actual clutch. Apparently, the way this works, you have these little adjustment uh, screws right here. If you turn them in or turn them out, it's gonna increase the size of the little gaps as you could see right here between these white pieces. That theoretically should engage the second gear faster or later. As we turn out the screw right here, you can see that the gap in this clutch is actually increasing. This is the way that the adjustability of the two-speed actually works now. Whether in fact it works or not, we're gonna find out. Now, of course, if you turn it out too much, it just doesn't fit into the hub that it came from. So we're gonna turn it back in a little bit. There are two of them, one on each side. Okay, it is fully in right now. It seems like it's spinning freely on the inside over here on the shaft. I am T-Max Tony, not only because I have this cool blonde hair, I have this terrific pink polo shirt, I have a Traxxas T-Max 3.3, which I was driving in this video if you saw, but I was also able to find some cool vintage information on the Serpent NT. This is a 2002 model. It cost 550 pounds when it came out. Now, if you do the conversion from the British pounds into US dollar, in today's dollar value of money conversion, this thing would cost over $8,000 and you would still need a motor and a full set of electronics. So this was pretty as high spec as it gets. Let's check out some of the interesting details in this article. They did a really good evaluation on this model. I'm gonna be using a couple of these pictures throughout the review of this RC itself. Fold up the original product 
product website. Clearly, this model is discontinued. Let me read some of this information all for you. Presenting to you for the 2002 season, the all-new Vector NT. A completely refined car features new ultra-low center of gravity and refined front suspension geometry. Based on the world and European championship winning Vector V series, blah, blah, blah. There we go. It says there was also a front pushrod conversion kit. Let's see what that actually looked like. So here is a picture right here of what it looked like. Basically, it is inboard shock mounting. I'm not quite sure if this was a different model or just an upgrade kit. Maybe somebody would know, but very cool. This is very similar to the way the Revo style shocks were mounted. I personally like this kind of design. Okay, let's see what it says in the description. Clearly, this is just, you know, a kit. You can tell that there is no engine or electronics included, as I previously stated. So, it says some of its main features. Totally new ultra-light and ultra-stiff chassis plate. Clearly, with all the incredible cutouts, all of that stuff going on. Refined front geometry and adjustable front suspension angle of attack. Pretty aggressive-looking splitter here in the front. It has an innovative steering system. It has refined rear geometry. I think they mean the enormous giant tires, but let's keep going. Ultra low center of gravity, low polar force. The polar force of this car has been lowered due mainly to a completely new fuel tank, which has been lowered and shortened. The tank is also wider, allowing its weight to be brought further to the center point of the car. The advantage of this feature is that the weight distribution doesn't change regardless if the tank is empty or full. A very interesting fuel tank design. I mean, a lot of engineering went into making something like this will do what it has to do and that is to win races.